Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to another episode of Pan the Organizer. So you're in for a treat today. We have this beautiful 2024 Audi RS6 Avant Performance in for a full detail, including ceramic coating application. If you guys saw a recent video I made on potential future choices for my next vehicle in the spring of 2024, uh, this was definitely one of them. Look how gorgeous. This is a beast of a car. Uh, and the customer did over six hours of driving to come and see me from another province. And uh, yeah, I was quite keen on me fully detailing this vehicle. He took delivery the day prior, had a full uh, front PPF done on the front clip and on the lower rocker panels. So let's go ahead and start the show. All right, so before we uh, start with the steps, uh, I want to mention that all the uh, tools, products, and equipment will be linked in the description under the video for you guys to check them out. So all you have to do is sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. So we're going to start with the pre-wash, and to do so, because we're in the middle of winter right now, uh, I'm using Built Hamber Touchless. This is a pH 12 sugar-based snow foam. So I'm doing the proper dilution for the uh, panel impact ratio that I have on my vehicle. I'm using a 5% PIR in this case because we want to fully strip off uh, any of that dirt, grime, road film, road salts, and all that kind of junk, and potentially any previous protection that was on there. So we mix it up with a bit of warm water in the foam cannon container. Uh, we're going to spray that onto the surface. In this case, uh, I'm spraying the snow foam on a dry surface. I want the snow foam to cling on and do its thing. Uh, by the way, I worked in a control environment, which means 68 degrees Fahrenheit or 20 degrees Celsius and roughly 40 to 45% humidity. So perfect conditions for all the detailing work I'm doing. So uh, the foam is clinging onto the surface and it's doing the uh, pre-cleaning. So the higher pH snow foams are actually some that can remove a lot of the gunk, the grime, the road and traffic film. So all this in preparation to flush off the majority of the dirt before you do the contact wash. So this is to minimize the chances of swirls and scratches when you're uh, doing the uh, the bucket wash. So we're going to fully rinse this off of the vehicle. And the goal here today, uh, as we discussed with the customer, was to preserve as much clear coat as possible. So we're not doing a major paint correction. I mean, after all, this vehicle is only a day old, uh, even though it drove over six hours, so quite a few kilometers or miles already. However, the uh, purpose will be to do a uh, one-stage paint correction, so a uh, light polish uh, to get it to probably 90-95%. This is a daily driven vehicle, so we're not looking for perfection here, but we want to increase gloss uh, clarity. Of course, that's through paint correction and then protect everything with uh, a uh, long-lasting ceramic coating. We're going to clean now the wheels and tires. I'm using Brake Buster in a uh, IK foam pump sprayer, diluted one part of Brake Buster to three parts of water, uh, and then I'm using a uh, tire brush to scrub the tire walls and then an assortment of different brushes to clean the wheels. Now in this case, uh, yeah, the wheels were shot because these are winter wheels. So they're rims from his previous Audi vehicle that he had for three years. So they've been through three full winters. Uh, they're fully scratched. Uh, they're already, they have a bit of dense road rash and all that kind of stuff. We weren't doing a wheels off detail anyways, since these are just, uh, again, the winter wheels. Uh, many provinces in Canada have rules and regulations where after a certain date for winter, you have to have winter tires so he kept his gorgeous summer rims with summer tires for the uh, nice seasons after April so um, yeah just keep that in mind these wheels are, are not brand new I was kind of worried initially because when I saw it, they were super dirty and disgusting and swirled up and scratched I texted the owner and asked him like you know these are not new right I hope the dealership didn't uh, try to sell these as, as being new and he's like no 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 these were from my previous car so anyways I digress so we did the uh, the calipers we used a lug nut brush and everything to do uh, well, all the details, the inner fender wells as well were fully cleaned. Now we rinse all of this up and it will be time to do our hand wash. So in this case, to remove uh, again, any of that road film, potentially any cheap wax that the dealership applied prior to delivery, most of them do that kind of stuff. Uh, and to remove any potential minerals that are in the paint, uh, we're using CarPro D-Scale. So I used five ounces of this in four gallons of warm water. I like to use warm water, especially in winter in the buckets. Uh, and then using the uh, starting by the top sections and working my, uh, my way all the way down to the lower parts of the vehicle. That's how I like to clean the cars to not cross contaminate because the dirtier parts, of course, are on the lower portion. I use a, a soft microfiber wash mitt to do so. So CarPro D-Scale really serves to kind of start prepping the surface by stripping older waxes and sealants. It doesn't fully remove it, but it can start the breaking down process. 
but is especially used to remove any mineral deposits that might be there. And again, any residual traffic film. So we used a high pH snow foam for the pre-wash and then an acidic or lightly acidic um, soap for the hand wash. So we're using this dual kind of pH layering to remove because you want to make sure you get the vehicle as squeaky clean as possible. Uh, and then we're going to go ahead and do the decontamination step. So now we're fully rinsing off uh, all the uh, soapy residue. You saw me go through the grills and intricate areas with a detailing brush. It's all about the details. I'd like to get into all the nooks and crannies. So for decontamination, we're using a synthetic decontamination uh, perforated towel from DIY Detail along with the DIY Detail iron remover. Uh, by the way, quick disclaimer, this is not a sponsored video. Nobody paid for this video. I'm just sharing the tools, thoughts, opinions, all the stuff that I use here. Uh, and so we use the iron remover as a clay lubricant. Not all iron removers can be used as clay lubes. You have to use some that have no solvents in them and don't use iron removers with traditional clay bars. So use synthetic perforated decontamination towels if you want to combine the chemical decon and the mechanical decon steps. Uh, for the wheels, we decided to protect a little bit, even though it's not a wheels off detail for a full coating on the wheels, I still want to over deliver. So I applied DIY quick beads, a graphene based uh, ceramic spray. So you spray on the surface, let it dwell for roughly 30 seconds, rinse from the bottom up, and then you're going to get hydrophobic properties. For the final rinse, I used my um, CR Spotless. It's a water deionizer. So I activated that to have 100% mineral free water for a spot free rinse then might as well do the um, rubber mats that are there for winter months so i sprayed mckee's 37 um, cargo mat and rubber liner rejuvenator so spray it on let it dwell a few seconds i used the same uh, brush for the tires uh, as i did for the floor mats rinse that off let them uh, dry and that's it we're now clean and good to go to dry the vehicle uh, i used my ego blower with the uh, stubby nozzle and this is a 650 CFM model. It's a cordless uh, blower, and I love that to drive vehicles because it, uh, well, it's very quick. It's battery operated, so you can go around the car quickly, and then you can touch up with a microfiber drying towel if there's residual water. Make sure it's fully, fully dry before you do the next steps. For polishing, I used the uh, DIY Detail Gold Standard Polish. It's in spray form. So you spray some, I use their gold waffle pad uh, for the finishing polish. So it's a kind of hybrid polish, depending on which pad you're using. It can be used as a compound with a more aggressive pad. They have a wool pad in their lineup, uh, or you can use it as a finishing or jeweling polish if you use it with a soft foam pad. So inspect your work when you're done polishing. Uh, again, this we're not aiming for perfection, but we wanted to get it to a point where it looks stunning, right? Uh, look here, there was some residue left over that tar remover wasn't fully removing. So that's from kind of the tape job from the manufacturer. So all that white stuff that comes on the vehicle to kind of protect the paint. And they uh, didn't really prep that well at the dealership. But uh, again, what I like about this polish, you don't even have to tape up the trim. You can polish the trim too with it. It's not going to stain trim in this case. Well, it's painted trim, so it doesn't really matter. But note that it will not stain your traditional trim. So I think that's a cool feature of this. Um, and I spoke about it in my favorite hybrids kinds of polishes video. Videos. Again, inspect your work. Here we can see clarity, tons of pop from the metal flake now. I really like the gloss and uh, yeah, I think it's going to look absolutely amazing. So next we're using DIY panel prep. This is an IPA based solution to remove any polishing oils or residue from the polishing stages and whatever potential still little light wax residue or leftover paint seal might have been there. So this really helps to get the paint squeaky clean. We're going to do the glass as well, both inside and out with the IPA panel prep. Uh, to fully degrease the surfaces because we're also going to coat the front and rear windshield uh, with the same coating because you're going to see the coating that we're going to use is very versatile. It can be used on uh, paint, plastics, lights, glass, wheels, uh, pretty much all the exterior surfaces. And here it is. We're using the DIY Detail 8-Year Ceramic Coating. So why this one? This is their flagship ceramic coating, but it comes with a lot of technology. So of course, Shake it up before you use it. Always make sure you shake your chemicals very, very well. Then you're going to prime your pad. I'm using here the uh, DIY Detail Foam Applicator because it goes well. So we're going to prime the pad with a bit more drops at the beginning. And then as you go, four, five, six drops just to keep the pad kind of moist as you're going. I run a line uh, down from there and I'm applying this one in circular motion. Uh, my friend Ivan LaCroix from DIY Detail, he loves applying coatings in circular motions and certainly that's what he does with his. Uh, and you're going to let it sit on the surface for roughly two to five minutes. I'm going to let it sit for five minutes. It's very forgiving. You have a long working time with this. Uh, you're going to see the rainbowing effect on the surface, kind 
kind of like an oil slick on water appearance. So you're going to set the timer. I'm going to let it go for five minutes and let me bring you in so you guys can see what it looks like on the surface. So see here, you get all this kind of rainbowing effect. Again, the oil slick on water look. That's what you're looking for. Uh, when like 50 to 60% of it has gone away or after those five minutes, uh, I like to use a timer to make sure I'm okay on time. Uh, well, it's time to start leveling. So this coating comes with all the technologies that you can wish for. It has silicon carbide, silicon nitride, polysilazane, and SiO2 or silica. So polysilazane is a hard, durable, flexible, and uh, resistant to abrasion. The SiO2 or silica were used for gloss and slickness. The silicon carbide is extremely durable, has chemical resistance and great gloss. And the silicon nitride reduces fracturing, so resisting kind of to, ho uh, to hot and cold cycles, right? So to level the coating, once your time is up, I use a short nap towel, the micro, the rag company uh, pearl towel. So that's a short nap towel. So that's to level the coating. Make sure you're removing any of the solvent carriers uh, that might have still been there and make sure you don't have any high spots. And then I follow up with the rag company Eagle Edgeless 350, a plusher towel, uh, again, to pick up any uh, residual stuff and make sure, again, you don't get high spots. Uh, if you have enough experience with this, I'm able to coat uh, at least two to three panels at once. So I start with the first panel, I coat it, I put the timer set to five minutes, move on to the second and third panel. By the time it's time to wipe the initial one, the five minutes have gone by and you can kind of do that. If you want to make sure you're okay, then work panel per panel if you're unsure of the experience level that you have. Uh, I did the same thing for the glass, so applied it in circular motion, uh, let it sit for five minutes, and then started first leveling with the orange towel, which is the uh, the pearl, and the uh, second towel doing the final buff with the um, eagle edgeless towel. Uh, of course, clean the glass. Here I uh, used the finishing glass cleaner uh, from Gion. It works very, very well. For the tires, of course, for the last final touches of the uh, detail, I used the Dark Side by CarPro. It's a tire sealant. Um, it lasts, in my conditions, anywhere from, let's say, three to six weeks on average, depending when you are uh, in, the, uh, in the seasons. And so let's have a look at the final results now and stay tuned in just a few seconds because you're going to see the customer's reaction. He was kind enough to allow me to film his reaction. Um, it, it was a stunning one. Super nice guy. So we can see it's like a mirror. It's dripping wet. What do you guys think, by the way? <laughs> Drop a comment in the comment section. Uh, by the way, the coating, the cool thing about this, it only has a one hour curing time. So after an hour, you can drive it in the rain. But like the company says, ideally, you want to let it sit for roughly eight hours if possible. I did better than that. I was able to leave it overnight in my garage. I always like uh, to, to give as much time as possible for the coatings to start curing. Uh, I would wait two weeks before starting to wash the car again. And I'm going to give, of course, the customer uh, all my tips and tricks for um, maintaining this. So yeah, dripping wet, super glossy, very, very slick. Uh, I'm very impressed. The three-year coating focuses on slickness and resistance to water spotting. The five-year is for gloss and the eight-year is for gloss, slickness, and ultimate durability. Also, I did the interior for the interior. I used the DIY uh, detail interior ceramic for the leather and plastic surfaces. Uh, for the carpets, uh, CarPro Fabric 2.0. Uh, I, of course, sanitized, cleaned all the surfaces first. Uh, and then went to uh, kind of protect them against UV rays. The um, also DIY uh, detail has some anti-static properties to help cut down on all that, make the interior surface a lot uh, easier to clean. But uh, now I know you guys want to check out the reaction. Let's check it out. All right, guys. So you saw the reveal. It looks stunning, right? But what's most important is the customer's actual reaction. And I know you guys love to see that. So uh, Jay is the owner of this fantastic Audi RS6 Avant Performance. Uh, this is his grail dream vehicle. So let's have a look at his initial impressions. He's freezing outside right now. I quickly mic'd him up. I wanted to catch the raw reaction before he sees his video. So uh, Jay, why don't you open the door and come on in. Have a look at that. Oh my <laughs> God. <laughs> Man, that is incredible. You have to come up. Well, look at it, of course, but oh my God. what I like to do, just run the back of your hand on the paint, feel that. I'm afraid to touch it. Oh no, you, ha you have to, you, you absolutely can. This is your car. Congrats, that by the way. That is like glass. Isn't it? <laughs> and as I told you, oh. it's gonna get better over the coming days as it continues to cure. Oh my God. But let us know for the audience. So when you picked it up brand new, was it as nice as this? 
Not even close. <laughs> I mean, I loved the car then, but it's indescribable. It's, it's something else, eh? It is unbelievable. I can't believe what you did to it. I mean, mm. I thought it was gorgeous. Before, I'm going to go but... over what kind of maintenance you need, of course, and give you the whole nine yards. But I wanted to film this uh, reaction because, well, you deserve it. This is a beauty of a car. By the way, my viewers know that I had that video with my seven top picks for my future car. And this is definitely one of them. So it is awesome that I got to detail it. So thank you for that. Oh. And uh, so, yeah, your initial thoughts, eh? They're pretty good. Thank you so much. Yeah, it's my, I mean, my pleasure, my I pleasure. I couldn't be more excited. You're going to be a YouTube celebrity now. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I think you've done all the work, you know. This uh, is, well this deserved. is gorgeous. Well deserved. And you're going to see how easy this is going to be to wash in your uh, maintenance washes. So enjoy, my friend. Thank you. Thank you so much. Oh, man, that was awesome. It's always a pleasure for me to see a person's reaction um, once they see all the hard work I put into making their vehicle looking better than you, protected for years to come, and certainly uh, make the vehicle much easier to clean during maintenance washes. That's one of the main goals of a ceramic coating is those self-cleaning properties, making the car, uh, well, less attractive of any dirt and grime, make it easier to clean, give it that great gloss, that slickness. And again, you can find all the links to the tools, products, and equipment that I used in the description under the video. Smash the thumbs up button and guys, keep it tight. Keep it clean and I'll see you on the next one.